Hey everyone, welcome to another Common UI tutorial uh, with the mascot of my cat right there. In this video, we're going to be going over enhanced input actions for Common UI. Now, there's not a lot of documentation or videos on this. I think like the most useful one is like a Nancy video. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but if you have, she does a lot of Common UI videos on uh, Lyra and then kind of like demonstrates how she set up things. Uh, but with this, I'm actually gonna walk you through how to set it up, uh, why we're actually going to do what we're doing. Uh, I do want to disclose that the enhanced Im input action is experimental. So um, it does warn you with that as well when using it, as well as on the documentation. Uh, so just bear in mind, there are a bit of weird kinks in it. Um, at the end of this video, I will mention some things that I came across that were a bit weird uh, that I'll just disclose so that in case you have run into it, you can do kind of similar to what I did. Uh, a lot of it is kind of the basic IT stuff is turn it on and off again, uh, restarting your editor or um, just removing a settings and then it re-inputting. Anyways, I'll get into that later. So with this video, I did set up a couple of widgets beforehand. Now these aren't set up with enhanced input. This is just to help speed along the video. And then when we do add the enhanced input, we're gonna then go into those widgets. I'll show you how you can add it in as well as to make sure that the icons are appearing uh, for your controller as well as um, mouse keyboard. So let's get into it. So first things first, what we have to do is we need to now enable common UI. So we'll go into edit plugins you just type in common we'll get here and then it will tell you that it is the beta version we'll hit yes and then you're going to then hit that restart and now that we have added the plugin we need to now go into the project settings so we're going to edit project settings there's a few things that we need to do and then we're going to have to restart the editor once more so let's go into common input settings what we want to do is we need to enable enhanced input support. So this is what's gonna allow us to use that uh, enhanced input actions for common UI. Um, as you can see, it's trying to prompt me to do that. We're just gonna do later and then allow out of focus device input. Uh, so this is for devices that are obviously not focused right now. Uh, we're still gonna allow them to get input in. And then from here, the input data, what we need to do is we need to now create our own. As of right now, it's just gonna go into the generic one, uh, but we wanna create our own. Sometimes this button works, other times it doesn't. As of right now, it doesn't look like it's working. So what you can do is, I'm gonna go into these pre-made folders that I've already created. We're gonna do blueprint, blueprint class, just search input data. And you wanna select the common UI input data. You don't really need to do the generic one. You can, uh, but there's really no purpose. And we're just gonna call this input data. I'm not gonna really be creative with this. And then if we actually open this up, I hate when it opens the graph like that. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. All right, as of right now, we don't really have anything to enter. These are just the default data table ones, but we don't wanna use that right now. So we're gonna save that for a later time. Okay. And then now what we need to do is we need to go into changing the viewport. So it's under default classes, general settings, game viewport, client class. We're gonna change this into common game viewport point. And then with that, let's go back into our common input settings. What we want to do is we need to set up our controller data. Now I've already made controller data set up for me already. Uh, but what you can do, if you haven't done it already, let's go ahead and go here. What we're going to do is now hit that plus button once more. Still not working. If we go into it, type controller data, you'll then see the common input base controller data. By creating this, I'm not going to give it a name because I'm going to delete it in a second. Once more, the graph is opening, and I hate that. From here, you are prompted this. Now you are able to pick what type of input type. So with this, you have mouse keyboard, gamepad, touch and count. And then you'll have to set up the input brush data map. From here, what it does is it tells you what key to press. So I'm gonna press Q. And then from there, 
you then have to specify what image to use. So I don't think I have a Q image. No, I don't. Uh, but let's just say that's like the Q image. And then you would have to set that up. So for the mouse and keyboard, it's going to be using this button, uh, Q. And then whenever it's using Q, it's going to populate that image. You know, that's really important if you're trying to showcase any type of icons for your UI. Now for gamepad, also bear in mind that when you switch to gamepad, you also have these options to select. So by default, Unreal Engine will show generic. And then from here, just also make sure that you put the platform name as Windows or whatever the respective platform is. Now I'm not going in how to set up controllers themselves, but just also make sure to set it up as such, as generic like that, and then you would go through and then you would just want to then set up every single button. So like, let's say this is a D-pad up and then you put an image for that and you so forth. So that's how you'd set that up. I've already set up my own with my gamepad as such. So I have the PlayStation icons and I'm using the button down and then I have the left, top, right trigger, all of those other buttons and a total of eight keys right now. And then with my PC, I also have roughly about, uh, about 14 keys entered in. So since I have these set up, we're going to go into the project settings again under Windows. And then the controller data, I'm going to select the two things that I have created. So gamepad and keyboard. One thing to note is that sometimes when your keyboard is the default and they start with gamepad or something or gamepad is connected, the icons may not show. So one tip that I saw ages ago that I don't even remember what it is, is to set the default input type to gamepad. So if you have a mouse and keyboard with gamepad options uh, to set the gamepad as the default one. And then also make sure to change the def default gamepad name to generic, because that is what we set up within the PC gamepad. And then that way you'll get the icons to show up. So I'm going ahead and leave it there. And now we're going to restart this. Let's actually delete that thing. And then now let's go ahead and restart. Okay, now that we have all the settings set up, we now want to move on to the input actions. So you do have to set up input actions a certain way if you want them to work with your common UI. Uh, so there's a few steps we have to go through. So we're going to kind of start from scratch and then we're just going to explain it as we go along. Uh, so I'm going to go into my pre-made folders here and then CUI is where I'm going to put in the input actions and the mapping contents. So from here, we're going to create an input action like we normally would, input action. And I'm going to do IA and then in the documentation, Unreal Engine or Epic Games, whatever you want to refer to them as, um, specifies to use UI. So we go IA, UI, and then we specify the name. So then we're going to do select. So we're going to go ahead and make one first, and then we're going to make a few others. So from here, we're going to then create a player mappable key settings. Uh, so this is important in order to get all of the information to populate. And there's a few things that we need to do. So we're going to go ahead and also put accept here. And then also, if you are using a common action widget. Uh, so this is when you are wanting to use a specific button that will show text of an action. You need to fill out the action description as well. So whatever is specified here is what gets populated into that common action button widget. We're not covering that in this video. However, I will have another video that goes over um, where we utilize that field, but just keep in mind that that is quite an important field later on. Next, what we need to do is we're gonna need to create a metadata. So with the metadata, that is how we're gonna specify that it's gonna be used for common UI. So we're gonna go ahead, create a new folder here. We're gonna call this metadata into here. We then need a data asset or data asset, however you wanna pronounce it really. And we need the common mapping context metadata. Go ahead and select that. 
We're going to do DA for data asset. And we're just going to do generic CUI. So generic common UI, nothing fancy. And then we open this up. We're now given two options. The first option is a drop down with one single option. We're just going to want to select that. So by selecting this, we then get another drop down. So this is a nav bar priority. So this is the priority of the input meta data. So pretty much the lower the number, higher priority it's going to be. Um, use at your own discretion. Unreal Engine does actually, I think in their example, they use like 10. Uh, make sure to use whatever best fits for you. If you want to have these as the lowest priority, then you probably want to set it to something like 10. Uh, if you want these input actions to have a higher priority, then you'll want to decrease that number. Just go ahead and select as such. And is generic input actions should be turned on. If it is not turned on, um, then you won't get the input actions to work with the buttons. If they are turned off, it will send that input action to the player controller. Uh, so depending on where you want to use it is where you decide through selecting, is this a generic input action or not? We'll kind of get into that a bit more later. So from here, we're going to go ahead and add in the one that we've used. So we're going to go ahead and select the UI accept. We're also going to then select common input metadata. And from here, you get the same exact options. So this is where you can then select, is this one going to be a generic input action or not? This top one should always be turned on. You don't need to touch that. But for any input action that we select here, that is where you can select whether it should or should not. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 10 anyways, just because that's what the documentation said. Uh, but the priority really just depends on what you're using. Actually, I can just have it all at zero because it doesn't really matter for me. And then from here, you actually can add in other input actions. What you can also do is that if you were creating a wide variety of different type of UI functionalities, or maybe you have some that are going to be utilized for, uh, let's say you want for mouse keyboard to have its own, gamepad to have its own, or maybe you want PlayStation to have its own, and then Xbox to have its own, things like that. You can go ahead and create your own, uh, like another one, you could do like generic PS5 or whatever, and then when you open it up, you can then change the settings to what you want to use for it. So if you have multiple different type of inputs that maybe they don't apply to both, you can go ahead and do that. You can also just use general uh, multiple different types if you're just doing some complex things. I don't know, come up with the ideas, but you do have the ability to do so. But with that, we're actually gonna want to create a few other type of input actions so that we can have a wide range of options. So we're gonna go ahead back into our CUI. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this a few times. We're gonna do, let's see, we're gonna change this to the back button. So this is gonna be like the uh, backspace or the circle button on a PlayStation controller. I don't own an Xbox, so I'm not really sure what's on the Xbox, but it's the right face button. And then we're gonna then do a tab left because we are gonna be using a tab list and showcase how that's gonna work. We're also gonna do a tab right because if you do the left, you gotta do the right. And then we're also going to do a open. Uh, this one is going to be opening up a widget to a stack on the use of a button. And then from there, we're actually going to create a, another option. We're going to call this print. And then we're going to call this close. So I do have a pop up, which I'll show you guys soon. But we're going to have all of these options. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how we can set up this one one more time, and then I'm gonna set up all the others. So we're gonna go ahead and go through, we want this as metadata. I could have searched it, but it's fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste and paste. And like that, we've set up another one. It's very simple. Now that we've created the meta metadata, we're gonna be able to add all of them pretty quickly. And then also under the metadata, we're also gonna go into here. 
And then we're also going to select back one more time. And like so, we have all of that. Now I'm gonna do all of the inputs right now, and we'll be right back, all right? Now we have all of them added in. I did the same thing on all of them, just repeated what I did with the accept and the back button. So now that we got this set up, we're now going to create our mapping context. So we're gonna go ahead back over here and we're just gonna do input, that should be enough. Then we want the input mapping context, IMC. We're just gonna do UI generic. And then from here, we now need to add in all of our inputs. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. It's gonna be another kind of long process. We're gonna go ahead and just select all of these. As such, we're gonna have the tab left, the tab right. We're gonna have also the, let's see, the open, close, and we're also going to do the print. Uh, so we're gonna focus on these ones first. The bottom three will kind of go into what the purpose is for in a bit. But for this, uh, for the accept button, I'm gonna do the enter button. So for my keyboard, we're gonna go ahead and use that. And then I'm also going to be using the face down button for the gamepad, or not face button bottom, sorry. So that's kind of the accept button there. For the back button, we're gonna be using the backspace. And then we're gonna do one more. And then we're also going to do the left. So that sets that up. We'll go ahead and do that. And then for the tab left, we're going to do the one key. And tab right is gonna be the two key. And then for gamepad, we're gonna be doing the shoulders. So left is gonna be the left shoulder. And then we're gonna do the right shoulder. Okay, perfect. So with that, we have those set up. One thing I do want to clarify is you do need a mouse key and a gamepad key if you want icons to appear. So there is a Kind of weird thing if you don't have both keys right now uh, so that is something i ran into as well as a few others that i've talked about on the internet internet i don't know why i stumbled on that but if there is only a gamepad key there can be issues with enhanced input action like icons and flipping back and forth uh, so just keep in mind if you don't include a key just try to enter in a key and see if that fixes the problem. Um, for the backspace and the enter key specifically, uh, I did have to add in a mouse key, uh, but for like tab left, tab right, um, things like that, I was able to leave off the keyboard key and it did work correct. It just seems for these two specifically, it does require a mouse key. So just bear in mind for that. For the accept button, you can also just do like the mouse click button and you could just move forward with that. Uh, it won't actually ever go through as well, by the way, because that's your mouse click button. Uh, so just also bear in mind on that as well. So if you're just trying to enter in a key for no reason, uh, you could use the mouse key. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the open, the close, and the print button as well. So give me one moment. All right, so I set the keys for those. I set the right trigger for three and then the other two face buttons for uh, four and five. I also just moved print above. So those are gonna be th specific things that I'm gonna be using just to showcase some extra functionality. It's why I'm not really going too in depth with this. But you'll also notice I actually didn't do anything specific with the triggers or the modifiers because I have set these all to a bool. So there's just like a true or false. There's nothing specific going on with that. If you're looking to do things with like triggers and modifiers, uh, go ahead and figure out on your own choosing. I am not using that for UI. So just bear in mind as well. So with that, we've now set up our input mapping context. We also have the, the metadata. So we're gonna go ahead and close this off. 
So one thing we could do is that to add the IMC to our character, we could go into here and then we could just go ahead and copy and paste all of this. Uh, what I'm gonna do actually is just go into the project settings. We're gonna go into the enhanced input and default. We're just gonna go ahead and add that in. Now this is only something specific. If you wanna make sure this is always added in uh, at the start, so just bear in mind, don't use this if you don't need to. And then I'm just gonna register with user settings. And that way I don't really have to worry about entering anything here because it's just gonna be used automatically. So now that we have that added, we're gonna now go into the current UI I have set up. And then we're gonna go in set up enhanced input with this current UI. So to give you a bit of a demo, Let's go ahead and open this up. Right now, all I have is a tab list on top, which four items. So it's just random images entered here. And then we're gonna have four buttons here. And then we also have a open button. So when we hit open, it just gives a nice little pop-up saying enhanced input actions can be used in pop-ups. Then we have a print button, and then we have a close button. So this print will play a nice little animation and the close button will just remove that completely. And then we get back over here. So now we're gonna make this all work with a uh, input action. So let's go ahead and exit out of that, shrink that down. We're now gonna go into opening up this widget. So now that we've actually done all the hard part, the rest of it is actually relatively easy. Now we just have to connect everything. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna then select the input action or the input mapping, I should say. So this is a common activatable widget. This allows us to select an input. This is what it will register using. So even if you have added to your player character, if the widget itself does not have an input mapping selected, you're not gonna get anything um, pulled in. So we're gonna go ahead and use that once again you can specify the input mapping priority. So you can go ahead and set whether it's gonna be a high or low or whatever. I'm just gonna leave it at that. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna select the display in action bar. Uh, this is so that when we use any type of action widgets or like a common bound action. So let me just type in common action. We have the common action widget and the common bound action bar. This is so that we can actually display input actions into these widgets and action bar and just to showcase icons. So now that we have that set up, we can then move on to the rest. So let's go ahead and then go into the list of buttons that I have created. So we have the accept button. Now we're just gonna play the matching game. We're gonna then go into here. Once again, display an action bar. And then let's go through all of them. As such, we got the back. We got tab left. We got tab right. And then we're also gonna go into the tab list. And then for the next tab and the previous tab, we're then gonna to want to also select the tab La oh, sorry, tab right is gonna be the next and tab left is gonna be that. And we're gonna also display an action bar. We're also gonna go, let me see, into the open. We're gonna then go into open, display an action. And then we also need to go into our nice little pop-up that we made. We're also going to want to set a input mapping as well, remember? So this is me in the future. I set the input mapping to UI generic. However, I was getting ahead of myself when I was just going through the motions. Uh, you actually don't need to set the input mapping for a second widget. You only have to set it for the main widget. Uh, there is no need to set it for a second one. If you actually did set a second one as such here, and then we went to play and hit open. And then if we close this, all of the icons disappear. This is due to the fact that when we are using the input mapping here, 
we then create this widget, which is also using the input mapping. And then when we remove this, uh, we're no longer using the input mapping. We got rid of it and we already stole it from this widget. So you don't need it here. Go ahead and clear that. Using. And then let me see, we're gonna go down to the print button. We're gonna then connect the print display and then we're gonna go into close and there we go. So from here, let's go ahead and hit play. So we do see all of the inputs appearing as such. The action bar at the bottom, what it does is it pulls in any type of input actions that are currently being used up here and then just showcase and creates buttons as such. There's other purposes for that. I just wanted to showcase that it does show the icons. I'll be doing a separate video for that. Uh, but we also noticed that our tab list is not actually populating any. So let's actually see what's happening here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into the tab list. Let's just specify it here. So we're gonna do tab two, 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 left. No, no, sorry, tab right, tab left. And let's also do tab left here and tab right. Okay, now we should see it. There we go. So now that we have that set up, let me now connect my controller. Okay, now that I've plugged in my controller, so we do see that the all the icons change now. So actually, before I start demonstrating the controller, there's one thing that we need to set, which is going to be under the input action, the input data. So we ended up creating in the beginning, but we never went back to it. So let's just go ahead and select the click action, which is going to then be the accept and then the back action is gonna then be the back. So just hit that. We just need that for simple functionalities. And then we can go back into now demonstrating the controller. All right, and then now for the demonstration. So we have everything set up here. So one thing is when we do the R1, we're switching through the tab list, we're moving through. We also have all of these buttons available. So if I hit the X button, select was selected and then we're going to do the back button and you'll see selected back and then we have tab left tab right uh, you'll notice it's not printing anything and that's because these buttons that i have tab left tab right are also being consumed over here these are just copies and that's why you see them twice but if we actually select all of these buttons it does in fact print them so they are working buttons as such uh, but yeah you also notice when I hover on top of, I have the enter key and that is because it is the click button. So because I have a common action uh, widget within this, it does show that you can choose to not have that appear for mouse and keyboard. Uh, so that is a selected option. So you don't have to worry about that. Again, I'm kind of going into those in another video, but yeah. So now if we do the R2, we'll have this open up. We have the print button by pressing triangle. We have a little animation that appears that says print was selected. And on the top left, you see selected print. We're then gonna go ahead and close this. And then we have all of the options. We also have the ability to navigate through. Uh, you also notice that if I try hitting X, nothing is actually happening here. And that's because of our duplicate down here, which has the same priority as everything. If you change the priority of the buttons, then you'd be able to choose which one gets selected first. Uh, so what I can do is under the main, we're gonna go ahead and just remove this, go back into here. And then when I move through, you'll notice that I'm getting the accept option that is appearing here. So I can now select the, the items as such. Generally, you don't want a button that is for your accept button uh, because that's kind of defeats the purpose of your select option. But with that, we have input actions that are working throughout everything. We can do tab left, tab right. Uh, we can then open that up, print, close, and yeah.
we can go through all of the motions and our input actions are working with UI. So I hope that kind of helped on how to set everything up. So one thing is when we go into the player controller, we go into here, let's go ahead and do, let's say IA print. Mm, I think it's IA UI print, sorry. We're gonna scroll in and started, we're just gonna do print string hello. And if we go in here, I believe print is our four button. So we should get hello, but you'll notice we are not getting hello here. So if we actually exit out of this, we're gonna again go into our do to do metadata under the print. We're gonna then turn off is generic input action. And then we're gonna hit four. and we'll be able to use it there. So you'll notice from here, it's not working and that's because there's nothing available. We don't have the input action being used here and that's why you can't do anything. So it does require having a widget that allows you to select. So if we actually hit open um, and by hitting four, oh, sorry, that's three, four, it's saying hello but you'll also notice the button is not being selected. So we're seeing hello, but nothing's happening here, but we can select print still. So that is the difference between utilizing is generic input. It allows it to send to the player controller, and then you'd have to do specific actions here as such like play animation or get the UI or whatever the case is you could do from there but it would not work with the UI itself, but it does require having the, a button or something using the enhance input action in order to get it to work. That is for the UI specifically. If you have UI enabled, that is required to do that. So we could go ahead and close that. So that is a demonstration. That is how you can set up all of the input actions. So on to a quick things that I ran into. One specific thing is if you are finding that you are running into your icons not appearing, what I had to do one time is that under the project settings, common UI input, the controller data, what I did is I went in to add in more keys for my keyboard and after saving, it refused to let me see new or see any icons whatsoever. And it required me to remove these completely and then add them back in. So it's literally just delete and re-add. So if I didn't do that, it was just not working even when I restarted the project. Uh, so yeah, just bear in mind with that. And also, if you ever find common UI stuff not working correctly or things getting a little weird, just restart your editor. Things like it, under the graph, when you're using enhanced input, sometimes your variables just don't appear. So you see how we have container left, right? Those would not appear whatsoever and they're just gone. And you're just not able to do anything. You can, however, search for them so if I was to type con container, you would have it available like that, but you just wouldn't have it on the dropdown. That was something that I did notice. Um, let me see, I had one more thing. Mm. I think I covered all of the tips actually uh, throughout this video. Yeah, because I, I mentioned that when we're opening up the input actions to have a mouse key for the back and accept button. Oh, one last thing. If you have an input action that has the same keys. So for example, if we had gamepad button top, yeah, top, that's triangle. I think on, we'll go into here. And you'll notice that the triangle is now missing. 
And that's because we now have two inputs that are using the same key. And depending on the priority depends on who gets the key. Uh, so both are set to priority zero, but it's saying that my default one is consuming the key. So therefore you're not getting it for this. So bear in mind, if you have two input actions, it does, or input mapping context, it does depend on what has the highest priority as well as um, if they're both active at the same time. So if you end up finding an icon is not working, you may have to switch it or you may have to remove the other input context until uh, you are done using this and then you can re-add the default or whatever it is. So, yep, that is everything for enhanced input actions, how to set it up, the general understanding of how to utilize it. And in the next one, we're gonna be going over how to utilize the common action widget. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, join the Discord, um, join membership on YouTube now. I'm actually gonna be getting rid of the Patreon because I'd rather just use YouTube all in one. It's just a lot easier and less for me to maintain. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining and see you next time.